An attempt will be made to restore Rhode Island's anti-abortion law. The word potential looms very big in my weather forecast for tonight. Reds hope to close in on third place in a game against Rochester tonight. Details upcoming on 10 Extra Effort News. Honey, honey, does our hospital insurance pay for any sickness or accident? Huh? Does it pay from the first day in the hospital? What? Does it pay right away without waiting? Well, what policy does? Well, CNA Plus does. Look. Wow. That's different. Announcing CNA Plus, a unique new supplementary hospital plan. See details in this brochure in Sunday's paper. This is 10, the news station. Good evening. Moving with a speed we don't often see, the Rhode Island legislature is honing in on the gap left in state law by the U.S. Supreme Court abortion decision earlier this month. Yesterday, the Senate Judiciary Committee approved a restrictive abortion bill despite the Supreme Court's move toward liberalized abortion laws. The House Judiciary Committee dealt with the same subject at a hearing this afternoon. Ten Sarah Wai reports. House Bill 5242 would set conception as the beginning of life and would prohibit abortion except to save the mother's life. Bill 5369 follows Supreme Court guidelines and would permit abortion on the decision of the woman and her doctor in the first six months of pregnancy. In the crowded meeting room of the House Judiciary Committee this afternoon, the testimony was all for the liberal law, and it came from women's groups, clergymen, and doctors. Dr. Andrew Blazer, a gynecologist and obstetrician, said the Supreme Court decision wipes out the luxury of continued moral debate. I believe, therefore, that we really no longer have the option of determining for a woman whether or not she will have an abortion. We decide only the circumstances, and in those, and in that type of a situation, it seems to me most appropriate that the procedure be done in the best of circumstances, which in my feeling is for a woman of this state in one of our hospitals by a competent physician. The Rhode Island Women's Political Caucus spoke for the liberalized law while acknowledging the fears of those worried about moral license. In a statement, the caucus said the decision to abort is always a difficult one for the woman or for the married couple. But the group facing perhaps the most difficult decision wasn't mentioned today. They are the Catholic physicians who may be caught between the laws of their church, which forbid abortion, and the laws of their state. For 10 News, Sarah Y. The vote to reenact the state's former abortion law failed to materialize in the Senate today. An effort to bring the measure to, the, to a vote on the floor was blocked by Republican Senator Lila Sappensley of Providence. She asked that the bill be put on tomorrow's calendar. Republican Senate Leader J. William Corr said the GOP senators probably will split the vote tomorrow. Meanwhile, Democratic Leader John Hawkins has banned all visitors from the Senate floor when the vote is taken in order to avoid a commotion. He said visitors will be permitted to watch from the galleries. The fire that engulfed an oil truck and four vehicles in Cranston yesterday afternoon brought out again last night. It broke out again. The blaze this time damaged a panel truck and a convertible. Fire officials say a gasoline can was found near the convertible. At this time, the second blaze is of suspicious origin. Chief Thomas Powers said the fire is under investigation. The fire was brought under control very quickly after its discovery about 11 p.m. Creation of a special legislative commission to study the feasibility of having the state buy Rhode Island's two horse race tracks has been proposed to the General Assembly. Pawtucket Democratic Representative George Panikas said he submitted the bill today as a way of bringing more money into the state treasury. He also said both Lincoln Downs and Narragansett Park are losing money under private ownership. Panikas said if the state bought the tracks, it could close Narragansett and build an industrial park on the site. While in New Bedford on another assignment today, a 10 News camera crew came upon an accident moments after it happened. The mishap at Cedar and North Streets was a two-car collision that occurred at a stop sign. The impact of the crash forced one car up onto the sidewalk. The accident occurred in a heavily populated section of the city and drew a good number of the curious. One woman was injured in the crash and taken to a hospital for treatment. Details remain sketchy pending the completion of the police report. 
Rhode Island's Bicentennial Commission is inviting similar groups from around the nation to meet in Newport this spring for a three-day program of seminars and workshop discussions of the 1976 celebration. The chairman of the commission, Democratic Representative George McDonald Jr. of Cranston, said the session will be held May 2nd to May 4th and would coincide with Rhode Island's May 4th Day of Independence. The special election in Pawtucket yesterday brought about an upset in the mayor's office. You'll meet Pawtucket's next mayor in a moment, and also special recognition for a very special resident of Rhode Island. Everyone knows you can get hot pastry with a toaster, but did you know you can get a choice of brands and a choice of savings with Stop and Shop? Look, these are Kellogg's Pop-Tarts, flaky crust, rich fruit filling, and mini priced at 42 cents. This is Stop and Shop Toaster Tarts. They also have a flaky crust and a rich fruit filling, but they're mini priced at only 34 cents. The difference, the eight cents you save on the Stop and Shop brand, worth going out of your way for. Jekyll and Hyde's, a new idea in eating and entertainment. During the day, a great restaurant with a unique lunch and menu idea for the businessman who wants to relax. At night, Jekyll and Hyde's is transformed into a great entertainment spot. Great show bands from Las Vegas to New York are coming to Jekyll and Hyde's. If you're looking for a fabulous night of fun and entertainment, this is the place to be. It's your place if you're over 21. Get dressed up and come on down to Jekyll and Hyde's at the corner of Orange and Pine, downtown. Class is a steak smothered in lamb chops. Class is always simple. The dynamite lady culture. My boss, my wife, my car. It's a hard word to describe, but easy to recognize. We think two Borg beers got class. It's one of the best beers in Europe. And now it's made in America with a taste of the old country, but light like American. And priced like American, too. Two Borg beer. It's got class. If you have it, it's terrific. Your nearby Datsun dealer has an important message for you. Despite the dollar devaluation, Right now, you can still get a new Datsun at the old low price. Luxurious 610s, Trans Am winning 510s, and Economy 1200s, all with four-speed standard shift or optional automatic, at absolutely no price increase. But hurry, they'll go fast. Remember, even though the dollar has been devalued, you can still get a new Datsun at the old price. The Rhode Island Health Department has given initial approval to a $7 million construction program for replacement of 70 beds at Pawtucket Memorial Hospital. Dr. Joseph Cannon, State Health Director, says there is every indication the formal application will be approved. The city of Pawtucket has a new mayor today, and he'll hold the post through the next regular election in the community until next November. 10 Newsman Ron Bradbury has a report. It was an excited household at 277 Walcott Street, the home of Dennis Lynch and family. Lynch won a decided upset victory for Mayor of Pawtucket over Councilman James Doyle. The 40-year-old Democrat won by 1,600 votes and defeated the party machine, too, since it threw its support to Doyle. Lynch got to bed at about 3.30 this morning, but it didn't last long as congratulatory phone calls began at about 6.30. He told me that Doyle ran a good campaign, but suggested that the campaign methods of some of those around Doyle helped him to win. He said that those methods were out of date and many voters resented it. Lynn said there were several reasons why he won, including the qualifications of the candidates. And then additionally, in the last few days, I would have to say that a couple of things entered into it. That was namely the refusal of my opponent to go into public forum on TV and radio and debate. And then secondly, uh, the endorsements of uh, partisan politicians, that uh, the independent people in Pawtucket are quite proud of that nonpartisan charter. And I think they kind of resented being told who to vote for. Were you surprised at the amount that you won? Yes, I have to say that uh, I am surprised. My opponent ran a very hard campaign, as we did. And uh, I'm not a great forecaster, but uh, had I forecast, I would have forecast a much closer race. I'm greatly surprised at the uh, good margin of victory. Lynch also told me that he would seek re-election in the fall, something that many people have taken for granted but until this morning, it was something the mayor had not officially disclosed. When I asked him why, he said nobody had asked him. Late in the morning, the new chief executive went to his downtown insurance office and received a warm welcome from his workers and close relatives who were there. Mayor Lynch said that he will probably take over his new job around March 1st and added that there will be an inaugural ball. The date for that as yet has not been announced. For 10 News, Ron Bradbury. 
Senator Abraham Ribicoff of Connecticut says he will vote for confirmation of L. Patrick Gray as permanent head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And Ribicoff adds he will fight for that confirmation. Gray, who lives in Stonington, Connecticut, has been acting director of the FBI since shortly after the death of J. Edgar Hoover last year. There have been some opposition from members of the Senate to Gray's nomination by President Nixon, but Ribicoff, a Democrat, said today he will push for Gray's confirmation as FBI director. Well, they say a woman never likes to tell her age, and while that may very well be so, it certainly didn't apply to Mrs. Richard Franklin today. Mrs. Franklin celebrated her 100th birthday today, and she was certainly proud of it. To become a centenarian is indeed a rare honor, because only a few people reach that milestone in life. So a rare honor dictates special recognition, and it came today to Mrs. Franklin at St. Maria's home on Governor Street in Providence. Roman Catholic Bishop Louis Jelano paid a visit to Mrs. Franklin and offered his blessings. And no birthday would be complete without the ceremonial cake. Sister Mary Jean McPartland, director of the home, brought it in to her, the one candle symbolizing Mrs. Franklin's 100 years of happy living. As Bishop Jelano prepared to say a special mass for her, Mrs. Franklin reflected on her 100 years. She was born in Boston in 1873 and came to live in Providence 65 years ago. Mrs. Franklin, who was in excellent health, was a nurse for a number of years at Chapin Hospital. She has this philosophy about her longevity. I've lived a good life, and it pays to enjoy it while you can. She added, I've always believed in treating everybody just the way I would want them to treat me. For 10 News, this is Michael Morgan. Well, that nine-day teacher strike in Warwick is hitting the school children where it hurts the most in their vacations. The Warwick School Committee has knocked three days off the Easter vacation and added six days to the end of the school year so students can make up days lost due to that teacher's strike. Rhode Island law says that public schools must be open 180 days a year. leader of the pack. Yes, all the leaders of the pack are now yours to enjoy in this new three-album collection. Remember the Shangri-Las? You get the crests, Lee Andrews. Long, long and lonely night. The Capris, the Jarmels. A little bit of soap will wash away. The Skyliners, the Dupree's. Kathy Carr, Del Shannon. Hats off to Larry. Johnny and the Hurricanes, D. Clark. A rain drops. So many rain and that's just a few of the many songs. The leaders of the pack that are yours on these three big albums, all for the amazing low price of only $4.95. You get Dion. They call me the Wanderer. Lloyd Price. Where were you on our The way Music Explosion. Me. Linda Scott. Oh, baby, I know every little star. Curtis Lee, The Mystics. Hush and bye, hush and bye. Don and Juan. Oh, what's your name? Gary U.S. Bonds. I don't you know that I dance, I dance to the world of The Beach Boys. <laughs> yes, all those and so many, many more. All the leaders of the pack. Collected for the first time in this great three-album package. All yours for the incredibly low price of only $4.95. Here's how to order. Mail $4.95 to Leaders of the Pack, Box 1021, Providence. You get these three exciting new albums for this one low price. That's right, all three albums just $4.95. So you don't forget, send before midnight tomorrow. That's $4.95 to Leaders of the Pack, Box 1021, Providence. Chris, I was just thinking, in addition to the sports work you do, you must be becoming an expert on the better hotels around this country. I can give you a pretty fair rundown. Right, you tell me about them later. Next time you take a little trip somewhere. <laughs> we have a variety of sports attractions for uh, sports fans here locally this evening, ranging from hockey, college, and pro to a good college basketball game in Kingston. Well, at the Civic Center this evening, the Reds take on the club. They're chasing for third place in the American Hockey League East, and that's the Rochester Americans, who lead the Reds by a two points now for third place, and the Reds are unbeaten in their last seven. Coach Larry Polpine is feeling better about things these days. Larry feels his club is more confident of late and has a good chance not only to take third, 
but make a run at second place too. And that will be a 7.30 game at the Civic Center tonight. And college hockey at Meehan Auditorium this evening. Providence College will take on RPI. That's an 8 o'clock game. RPI topped the Friars earlier this year 4-1. to one. Brown will be playing hockey tonight too. They're on the road. They meet Yale and New Haven. And in the pros, the Bruins play again this evening out there on the coast, meeting California after their fantastic come-from-behind win last night. Boston trailed 4 to nothing after 1, but won it 7-6 to six with Ken Hodge getting the winning goal. An interesting story is that Ken is playing with considerable pain due to a hand and wrist injury, but with it all, tallied on a beautiful pass from Phil Esposito for the seventh and winning goal. And basketball, the Friars are back home after a win at Villanova and prepping for a game with Assumption tomorrow night at the Civic Center. Kevin Stakem had quite an evening at the Fieldhouse last night with his 25 points, taking up the scoring slack brought about by Ernie D's illness. The Holy Cross transfer student combined with Marvin Barnes to make it a Friar victory. And, of course, they play Assumption at the Center tomorrow night. We'll have the game for you on WJR Radio. And tonight, URI at home to a good Temple team. And they have possibilities of a tournament berth. That's an 8 o'clock game at Keeney Gymnasium. And some more interesting games around the land tonight. Maryland will be at Duquesne. St. John's plays at St. Joseph's. Later in the show, Joe Mullaney talks about Ernie DiGregorio and his pro possibilities. And to check on the Milwaukee Bucks and some of their problems. And Muhammad Ali, too. What do you Thank you, Chris. This line was almost written for you. There's no place like home. You don't get to see it very often. That's especially true, though, in the case of a Navy pilot from North Dartmouth who has returned home after six years in captivity in a North Vietnamese prison camp. The return of Lieutenant Commander Fred R. Purrington. We'll have that story next. Small business is our business. So is big business and everything in between. A nationwide business insurance plan can protect you, your property, and your employees in a big way. Business insurance that's as personal as our family insurance. Big or small, as long as it's a business, we're in business. Uh-uh, don't touch that sponge. Introducing new Ajax sponge cloth. With Ajax sponge cloth, what's hard is easy. Cause sponge cloth absorbs like a sponge, handles like a cloth. Forget that rag. What's hard is easy for new Ajax sponge cloth. Sponge on the inside, cloth on the outside, so it gets into places sponges can't. Rinse it, use it again, see? Now what's hard is easy with new Ajax sponge cloth. A new car is a very personal thing. You can finance your new car quickly at low monthly payments you can afford with an auto loan from any of the 21 combined offices of Old Colony and Newport National Banks. Stop in at any one of our 21 offices throughout Rhode Island. Magnavox only has one sale a year like this, and it's now. Color TVs, stereo consoles and components, radios, over 100 high-quality, high-performance models at big savings. Magnavox only has one sale a year like this, and it's now. Big savings during the Magnavox annual sale at Avery Adams Magnavox Home Entertainment Center. The mother of a returned war prisoner from Berniston, Massachusetts, says the family will not ask him any questions about his six years in the Vietnamese prison. Mrs. Sarah Eastman says her son, Navy Commander Leonard Eastman, said nothing about it when they visited him recently at the Chelsea Naval Hospital. She says they'll let him do all the questioning that he wants. A Navy pilot from North Dartmouth came home to Massachusetts this morning for the first time since 1966. And even though the hour was odd, the red carpet was out, as it will be for all the returning prisoners of war. This was the Christmas day that Betty Purrington waited almost six and a half years for. She and her grandmother arrived at the South Weymouth Naval Air Station about 3.30 this morning, well in advance of the plane carrying Lieutenant Commander Frederick Purrington home from North Vietnam. The Air Force DC-9 touched down at quarter to five, and for the first time in six and a half years, Navy Reserve fighter pilot Fred Purrington was in his home state of Massachusetts. It was October the 20th, 1966, when his A-4 Skyhawk, operating off the carrier Franklin Roosevelt, was shot down on a combat mission over North Vietnam. 
Greeting Parrington, along with his sister Elizabeth and grandmother Hannah Raymond, was Noel Hill, a close personal friend, the man who taught him to fly. Well, hi. I understand it's about five o'clock in the morning here. And it's just amazing to me that all you people have turned out to see me. The guys and I that made this trip back here can never ever express our appreciation enough to you people. We feel that the support that you gave us and the faith that you had in us turned the key to the door of freedom and has made it possible for me to be here today. So I owe a great deal to you people and we are going to try to repay it. Thank you very much. Commander Purrington had requested that about 20 friends meet him at the field. They were all there, plus another 40 or so who came, invitation or no. After the reception, Purrington became the second ex-prisoner of war to enter the homecoming center at the Chelsea Naval Hospital. The medical exams don't start till tomorrow because he appears to be in such good shape. He talked with his family this morning, made a few phone calls, had a few beers, and went to bed. For 10 News, Art Norwalk. When Commander Fred Perrington is released from Chelsea Naval Hospital, he'll return to his home in North Dartmouth, Massachusetts, and he's going to find a lot of changes. Today, 10 Newsman John Sweeney took a look at the area and gives the commander a preview peek. When Fred Perrington finally returns home, he'll find some of the sites he's familiar with and a lot of new ones. The high school he left in 1958 is still there, but just around the corner, there's a new middle school he's never seen before. And off Route 6, where there used to be woods, new stores have sprung up all over, the biggest of which is the new North Dartmouth Mall, just a stone's throw from Purrington's boyhood home. Perhaps nearby New Bedford will provide the biggest visual surprises for a man who hasn't seen his home area since 1966. That tenacious whalesman still stands ready to do his thing in front of the public library. But just a few blocks away, a federal program Purrington probably never heard of has provided the muscle for tearing down tenements and building up play lots. Six or seven years ago, rows of broken down buildings stood between New Bedfordites and their beloved ocean. Today, those buildings are gone. And although it's not Palm Springs, Fred Purrington will now be able to see New Bedford Harbor from Pleasant Street. He won't find the old Olympia Theater, that went about a month ago. He will find the New Bedford Hotel, but it's not a hotel anymore. Soon it will provide housing for the elderly. And along the waterfront, he'll find new high-risers. So the former POW will be coming home to an area that's changing. Oh, it's still got a way to go, but after downtown Hanoi, well, Ironically, the 1958 edition of the Dartmouth High School yearbook lists Fred Purrington's future as undecided. 
As we now know, his future was decided for him, but only part of it. After six years of hell, he made it. And no doubt a lot of credit has to go to his Navy training. But being brought up in a small New England town like Dartmouth had to help too. This is John Sweeney, 10 News in Dartmouth. John Giorgi with the weather is next on Extra Effort News. Following that, news reports on the hearings in Washington on the proposed newsman's shield law, the testing of a new automobile safety feature. Gene Shallot reviews a new movie starring Michael Caine and Mickey Rooney, and that's just before Chris Clark presents part two of his sports report. Also ahead, a consumer report and today's closing stock market averages as reported by Michael Morgan on the business report. Beautiful wood just makes this room. Believe me, it hasn't always looked like this. I tried covering it up with wax, and then I discovered Scott's Liquid Gold. Liquid Gold cleaned and conditioned the wood, brought out the color and contrast. It penetrated the wood, and that dry, faded look seemed to disappear, as well as scratches. A nice thing about Liquid Gold is it doesn't attract dust. <laughs> Makes my job a lot easier. After seeing what Liquid Gold can do, use it weekly and keep it that way. And there's the large size for the big jobs. Nandies is good things to eat. Friendly faces, first rate meats. Fernandes is your value store. Low, low prices save you more. Fernandes is weekly features folks who care. Finest meats found anywhere. Faster service, famous brands, everyday fair prices, and that's what Fernandes is. Dodge invented it, the Dart Sport Convertible, the versatile five-seat sporty coupe that turns into a sunroof convertible or a great little wagon at the flick of an option. And now Dodge adds the vinyl touch with a beautiful canopy vinyl roof, and your Dodge dealer can give it to you at no extra charge when you order any Dart Sport specially equipped with white walls, wheel covers, vinyl bench seat, and more, because Dodge gives it to him free. Dart Sport with the vinyl touch at no extra charge. Depend on it. Don't take winter sitting down. Go get a bag of Morton Safety Salt. Your very good friend, your heart association, wants to pass along these words to the wise. Watch your diet. Watch your weight. Don't smoke. And don't forget to exercise. Diet, weight, exercise. Don't smoke. Oh, John, you are a sneaky one. Yes. <laughs> I see the word potential for heavy snow, which means that it may and it may not. And don't blame We're, John if it really hits, because he said potential. I'm, I'm covering myself tonight, Dick. We've had this uh, same situation many times this winter, you know, that, that idea that the potential for a storm exists. Uh, I'm, one thing I'm pretty sure of, and I may as well go out on a limb and say, we're going to have some light snow for sure. I don't think there's any doubt about the fact that uh, the uh, light rain showers that will be occurring during part of this evening will turn over to some very light snow uh, during the night as uh, some colder air comes in. But then the real problem is tomorrow because a lot of things are beginning to happen offshore. Uh, the only indication we have of any data out over the ocean is the weather ship, which is, of course, located a couple of hundred miles south of Nantucket Island. That's going to be very important for us tonight. Let's look at our local weather map tonight. We can see that a few showers have broken out in western New England. In fact, as close by as Worcester, Massachusetts, a shower as of 6 o'clock where it's 41 degrees. And with temperatures in the 40s today, you'd uh, really go far to believe that there's going to be some snow late tonight and during the day tomorrow. So generally in western and central New England right now, there are scattered light shower areas. Uh, moving about and uh, on a more or less hit or miss, miss basis. They've had one around P Poughkeepsie, New York, where it's 36. Still 42 around Hartford, Connecticut, off and on light showers, rain showers there. And uh, getting closer to home, down at Westerly, uh, 40 degrees, uh, just a cloudy sky, 40 degrees as well. In fact, remarkably uniform temperature from the westerly area all the way to New Bedford where it's 41. In the 30s over the Cape, and the wind is very light. Notice offshore, northeast, about five knots right now. And we'll repeat that word again, potential, for a period of heavier snow sometime during the morning hours tomorrow. And that could occur during the commuter hours. And we'll show you when we get to that national weather map just why we think there is a potential for some heavier snow than the light snow that's now forecast. Here in Providence right now, we have a mostly cloudy sky. Uh, again, today I was uh, faked out by the cloud uh, sun 
uh, problem. I felt there'd be more clouds than we did have, and we had a lot of bright sun, which popped the temperature up to 49 degrees for high today. And right now, that temperature is really not too much lower. Here at our 10 Weather Central, our thermometer right now is running at 41 degrees. That will begin to drop. Uh, that's why uh, we're indicating uh, the changeover from any showers this evening to a lighter snow very late tonight, probably up to midnight. The barometric pressure continues to fall, and that falling barometer is going to be with us for the remainder of tonight into the early part of tomorrow at uh, 29.80 inches. The relative humidity is creeping upward, getting up around 60% level. That will continue to rise through the remainder of tonight. The wind velocity is very light. In fact, it's hard to determine any uh, real substantial wind direction anywhere right now. Our uh, wind vane uh, continues to show west southwesterly directions, but many shore, shore points continue to indicate wind from the east or slightly north of east. Well, that's a rundown uh, setting up the uh, forecast for tomorrow. That complete forecast in the ski outlook in just a moment. Stand aside, giants. <laughs> I'd not budge if you were the king. How about it then? <laughs> Giants, come and join us for an ale. Those were the lusty ale days. We brought them all back with Miller Ale, brewed from a very special traditional recipe. Take a step back, would try Miller Ale from out of the ale days. Hey, men, you know, Command Dry and Natural is the hairspray for active guys like you. Your hair stays naturally neat when you're putting the shot. Even throwing the javelin won't muzz it. And to keep your cool when the going gets tough, Command Antiperspirant with a fresh outdoor lime scent will help you stay dry. Command Dry and Natural Hairspray and Command Antiperspirant. Long-lasting control for active guys like you. When you open a loaf of sunbeam bread, you open up a whole new world of freshness. Freshness you can feel and smell and taste. See for yourself. Ordinary bread has holes. Batter Whip Sunbeam has no holes, so freshness stays in, the kind your family loves. Open a package of freshness. Batter Whip Sunbeam. It's the fresh one. A million one, a million a two, bank? Bank, yes. A bank? Yes. Why should I keep my checking account with you? Well, I... Oh, I know. There's no service charge if I keep a daily balance of over $200. Yes. And I... if I have a lower balance, your mini-charge plan lets me write checks at the lowest possible cost. Yes. But, but Bank, yes. and there are others. Well, yes. Oh, Bank, I know why. Why? Because you're such a good listener. Hospital Trust, the bank that helps you help yourself. I'd say on at least a half dozen occasions this winter so far, you uh, snow lovers have had some reason for hope. And each time you've been disappointed, at least if you've lived here in and around the Providence area. Tonight, again, there is more hope for snow lovers. And let's look on that uh, national weather map. Uh, we can see that quite generally there are two storms of most importance to us right now. One is uh, two or three hundred miles east of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, way out over the ocean. And the only reports we've had on the circulation of that storm have been from a satellite picture which came in earlier this morning and also the weather ship which is still quite a way away from it but indicating a northeast wind all day long. So there, there is a storm way out over the ocean. Also another one which last night at this time was up in southern Canada has been moving southeastward. will cut across Pennsylvania during the next couple of hours and likely move out over the ocean over the Virginia coastline, then it will begin to merge with that storm offshore. Now, you remember the last time this happened, the, the Cape uh, got quite a bit of snow. They had uh, several inches of snow, seven to as much as 10 or 11 inches of snow on the Cape in the same type of weather situation. We here in Rhode Island did not get bothered by that storm because it moved too far offshore. That uh, same type of situation is going to exist late tonight and during the morning hours tomorrow. Or at this point, Again, frankly, we can't tell just how far the heavy snow is going to spread inland. It could reach as far inland as Rhode Island and eastern Massachusetts. Then again, it could stay offshore, and only time will tell, very frankly. And uh, I'm just sorry about that. I really can't go much farther than to say we will have some light snow and still the potential for some heavy snow in the morning hours tomorrow. So let's look at the forecast as I see it for the remainder of tonight. This is my best estimate of what's going to happen in the next uh, 24 hours. Some sprinkles this evening of rain. 
That will change over to some light snow as it turns colder, probably after midnight tonight, low temperatures generally in the 20s. Then for tomorrow, there'll be some snow in the morning. We've already delineated uh, the potential for light and heavy snowfall. It'll be windy and colder during the day. High temperatures tomorrow only in the 20s, probably some 20 uh, to possibly 25 degrees colder than today was. For you folks on the Cape, the potential for heavier snow is even greater because you'll be closer to the storm center. Clearing very cold tomorrow night. Low temperature will be around 10 degrees. Then looking at the extended outlook, for Friday, it should be generally fair, cold in the 20s. Some light snow possible again on Saturday. Then that will be followed by fair and cold weather continuing right on in. So we've seen the last of the mild weather, that's for sure. For skiers, uh, things are still pretty good up north, but the slopes are getting a little bit worn out. Uh, we definitely need some more snow up there. Still good to excellent conditions reported on the morning reports this morning, but actually more snow is needed. And that dashed line I have on the New England map shows the potential for uh, substantial new amounts of snow in Maine, uh, mainly eastern sections of New Hampshire, eastern uh, Massachusetts, and much of Rhode Island. The forecast would be for possible substantial new snow, particularly in New Hampshire, Maine, eastern Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. It'll be windy and cold tomorrow, fair, very cold on Friday, and it looks as though the cold is going to continue through the weekend. Lots of new weather data coming in through the evening, and we'll see you again later on tonight. John's Late Night Forecast, with an extra for news at 11. A bill was introduced in the Rhode Island House today which would require newspapers to identify the writers of editorials. The bill was submitted by House Majority Leader John Skiffington of Woonsocket. If passed, it would set fines of from $100 to $300 for the first offense and from $300 to $500 for second offenses. Several newsmen have been jailed recently for not revealing the source of stories alleged to have been helpful to grand juries and state and federal courts. Congress is in a series of hearings to determine if legislation should be passed that would shield reporters from forced testimony about confidential sources. One of the committee members, Senator Edward Kennedy of Massachusetts, gives his view about the problem. National freedom of the press has been seriously undermined to the point where reporters now find themselves fair game for any aggressive or unscrupulous prosecutor armed with a fishing license stamp subpoena. My own view is that the current situation is so serious that Congress should not hesitate to enact the broadest possible legislation designed to give newsmen an absolute and unqualified privilege from subpoenas to disclose their notes and sources. The privilege should apply to all jurisdictions, federal, state, and local, and to all branches of government, legislative, executive, uh, and judicial. In the current debate, nothing is more misleading than the suggestion the real question should be framed as a choice between combating crime or protecting news sources. The question is not whether we shall have privileged news or unprivileged news, but whether we shall have privileged news or less news. The public as it watches television and listens to the radio, and reads its magazines and newspapers, will be the greatest loser if the news media are compelled to perform their vital role under the current oppressive atmosphere. Today in Washington, the Senate Commerce Committee began hearings on the status of airbags as safety devices in automobiles. Several questions still surround the airbags, including the cost of the consumer and overall protection to the rider. The major car manufacturers are proceeding with testing, and some car models have been equipped with bags. Len Berman reports from Dayton. General Motors has quietly placed 1,000 new cars on the road equipped with airbags. Half are going to consumers who lease from fleet operators. The bag that protects the driver pops out of the steering column when a barrier crash exceeds 17 miles an hour. They're all manufactured at GM's Inland Division plant in Dayton. Airbags aren't mandatory until after 1976 due to court rulings, but GM isn't waiting. They've also announced the bags will be an option on some models this fall. It's noteworthy that a car manufacturer which fought the early mandatory use of the equipment is now rushing to offer it to the public. Well, I think I can understand that. That is a dichotomy, apparently. Uh, however, our concern, and our concern is the same as the rest of the automobile industry, and that is that we want this device to be thoroughly tested. We want it to be thoroughly reliable. Uh, and we're not at all 
uh, against uh, airbag or any other passive restraint system. They'll save lives. The main thing is that we don't want to go from the frying pan into the fire. Uh, we don't want devices which might possibly create accidents rather than save lives. General Motors is now in the uncomfortable position of waiting for accidents to happen. With 1,000 airbag cars being placed in use, researchers expect roughly 17 accidents. And for the first time, they'll be able to assess just how safe the new safety features are outside the lab. Len Berman reporting for NBC News. Every week, all over the country, groups of men, businessmen, professionals, and blue-collar workers get together for one reason. They're all gamblers, but their meetings are not aimed at making a killing on the horses, ball games, or the numbers. Mike Liederman reports on one such meeting. My name is Mike L., and I am a compulsive gambler. I was actually conned by my wife to come into GA to try to straighten out my life. These men don't want their faces shown because they are ashamed of their past and are trying to build new lives. They are all like Mike L., admitted compulsive gamblers who have turned to Gamblers Anonymous, GA try to control their weakness. GA is patterned after Alcoholics Anonymous. The two groups are not connected, but both rely on the individual's admission of his problem and help for him from others in the same situation. We grew up with knowing it's in our blood. We have to do it. There's, uh, you know, I didn't care if uh, my wife was hysterical on the floor or my kids crying or no bread in the house, let's say. I mean, I just had to gamble. There was no choice until I came into the room and saw someone get up there and said, I didn't gamble for two years. And I related to his story, really. All of a sudden, I realized that I didn't have to waste 42 years of my life. At meetings, each man recites his gambling history. Others comment, and there are readings from the GA handbook on coping with gambling instincts. The key here is that members want to help themselves and each other. But success is difficult to measure. Many members do attend meetings and stop gambling, but GA admits fewer than half of those who have ever been to a meeting stay with the program. And GA's 2,000 members is but a small fraction of the estimated 8 to 9 million compulsive gamblers nationwide. GA admits that gambling can never be cured, only controlled, much like insulin is used to control diabetes. That's why these men are here, to get their verbal insulin every week for a disease they'll carry the rest of their lives. At Gamblers Anonymous, I'm Mike Lederman. Well, there's a new movie out called Pulp. It has nothing to do with the lumber industry, though. It concerns the industry of churning out stories for pulp magazines. The movie stars Michael Caine and Mickey Rooney. And Gene Shalit finds it most amusing. There's a nifty new movie called Pulp, P-U-L-P. Pulp is a spoof, a wild and witty lampoon. It's a send-up of the hard-boiled detective stories. Pulp stars Michael Caine and Mickey Rooney. Michael Caine plays the author of grind em out detective novels that appear in pulp magazines. I don't know who the girl is, and I don't think he knows, or I don't think he cares either. Mickey Rooney, who is never funnier, plays a 1930s movie screen tough guy who has now retired and lives on a European island. There are also winners like Lionel Stander as a gravel-voiced, pool-hustling hood, and Elizabeth Scott, as lovely as ever, and with her sensuous speech intact. The dialogue is slick, and the action zips along like a new talon. The screenplay is by Michael Hodges, and the direction is by Michael Hodges. So two cheers for Michael Hodges, and three cheers for Michael Caine and for Mickey Rooney. And also for Pulp, a mystery movie that's the laugh of the month. It'll make you feel really good. I'm Gene Shalit. The Hasty Pudding Club at Harvard put on quite a show to honor Liza Minnelli as their 23rd Woman of the Year. The occasion was complete with costumes, a brass band, and excerpts from coming Hasty Pudding shows. Miss Minnelli was paraded around the campus in a 1940 Lincoln. The daughter of Judy Garland has been nominated for an Oscar for her role in the movie Cabaret, and she responded to all the hoopla by singing the title song for her hosts. She was asked how she felt about being honored by an organization that barred women until two weeks ago. Miss Minnelli replied, they're in now, and anyway, it's fabulous to be a woman. It's daytime thoroughbred racing tomorrow at Lincoln Downs. Post time, 1 p.m., nine big races. Lincoln is enclosed and heated for your convenience. No racing on Tuesdays. Crocker Ford, a bigger idea. 
Come to Crocker Ford for a razor-sharp price on America's prestige wagon, a 1973 LTD Country Squire. $37.88 delivered. That's right, just $37.88 for a 73 LTD Country Squire at Crocker Ford, 777 Taunton Avenue, Route 44, East Providence. Tomorrow on the 430 movie, Frank Sinatra and Mitzi Gaynor in the conclusion of The Joker is Wild. It's my home. <laughs> Baby, what's a home without a horse room? Relax. Relax? Will you please tell me how to relax to standing room only? If I wanted to take a nap, I'd have to do it standing up. Frank Sinatra in the tragic so Joker is Wild. Tomorrow on 10's 430 movie. Last fall, Philco introduced color TV with hands-off tuning. So simple, anyone can do it. Now we're having a special on these solid-state consoles, and again, Philco has one idea better. An extra year of service free. That's a two-year warranty, parts and labor on three solid-state models. Anything that's our fault, we fix. The Philco One Idea Better Special. Buy Philco Color TV now at Tony Goodrich's Television City. Do you know what that is? That's the sound of a healthy heart, and it's trying to tell you something. Keep yourself in shape. Keep an eye on those calories. Keep away from cigarettes. And one other thing, keep giving to your heart association. Beat the big one. Heart attack. Once again with sports, the happy wanderer, Chris Clark. Thanks again, Dick. We don't have too much doing in the world of professional basketball tonight, but we're getting down to that important stage right now with the playoff berths up for grabs. And the Milwaukee Bucks continue to lead in the Midwest Division of the NBA by four and a half games over Chicago, despite a large number of injured players. Well, the Bucks beat Cleveland last night, 118 to 100 in Madison, Wisconsin. Lee Stevens has the report. Larry Costello plays with a patchwork lineup almost every day now, wondering when, if ever, he'll have everyone healthy once again. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Oscar Robertson, Bob Dandridge, and now Curtis Perry, all injured as the Bucks struggle to keep pace with Boston, Los Angeles, and New York. To make matters worse, recently a national sports publication claimed the Big O was at the end of the line. Larry Costello disagrees. Well, Oscar Robertson uh, played two great games this past weekend when uh, Kareem was out. Uh, he got his 31 points and 22 points and did a great job defensively and uh, just a fantastic performance. And and we go to Baltimore, the third game, and he comes up with his injury. So a lot depends on his, uh, his health and his condition. Uh, there's no question I think Oscar slowed down. We all slow down the older, the older we get, but he's got such a great talent, and when he's playing and putting it together, uh, he can still get the job done. Costello has managed to keep Milwaukee on the winning side of the ledger 45 times this season, fourth best in the NBA. All Robertson did here was score 28 points, pick up 12 assists, grab 10 rebounds, and lead the Bucks' famous fast break as they clobbered Cleveland. This is Lee Stevens reporting for NBC News. Well, last night there were quite a few pro scouts on hand for that PC Villanova game, including the Bucks' UB Brown. You can talk highly of Ernie DiGregorio's pro future. Most of pro clubs now seem to feel the same way about Ernie's possibilities. Kentucky Colonel coach Joe Mullaney was with us recently. He actually recruited Ernie for PC. We asked Joe about the North Providence senior and pro basketball. Well, it's according to how you look at him. I think the people that are close to him have seen him a lot. Uh, look more favorably upon him. The people from a distance, of course, look at the size and and uh, they question speed, which I don't question, and I'm sure the people who are close to him don't question because it's uh, it's deceptive, you know. This, this business of being, well, Calvin Murphy's a good example of an extremely quick player who just doesn't necessarily just make it on that. You have to have other other skills. Uh, and I, I, I don't know where he's going to go in the draft. I, I just feel that he's going to make it. I think he's got all the equipment that, that he needs. As he's a spe he has some special talents that, the, that are very attractive. And professional basketball, even more than college basketball, is, a, is an entertainment thing. And, uh, and it's something that the owners are looking for, a, fellow, a player who can entertain people. And I think he has an awful lot going for him in that area, too. So I, there's no question in my mind that uh, he'll be able to do the job. As to where he's picked, I don't know if that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, very important to the average person. It's probably important to Ernie, but I, I think that uh, the question really is, is he going to make it? And I think he's going to make it. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if everybody concurs, but I, I believe he will. 
What you're saying, you'd like to have them on the Kentucky Colonels, I presume? Well, I mean, no question about it. For our particular needs, we would. I think he'd be the type of player that we could really use. Uh, uh, we have two small guards now, so, uh, you know, generally you like to balance it off, you know. So if that ever came about, you know, we'd probably have to do some some maneuvering with our present personnel because uh, we, we probably have the smallest backcourt in the league now. And... Uh, uh, everyone says, get the 6'5 guard that can do everything. Well, you know, there aren't a lot of 6'5 guards around that can do everything. So, uh, is, uh, to answer your question, we, we'd, uh, with his talents, his ball handling ability, that's something we really don't have. We'd really like to see something like that. But as I say, we have small guards now. We have to do some juggling then. And some boxing, too. Muhammad Ali has polished off the European champion Joe Bugner and remains confident as ever that champion George Foreman wants no part of him. Well, Ali was in his usual rare form in Los Angeles, where he talked with NBC's Tom Hawkins. It will be no contest, me and George Fulman. Not a chance. George Fulman don't want to talk about me. All his interviews, he don't mention me. George Fulman, after the fight, don't want to talk about me. And you can't blame the kid. Let him enjoy the title for a year or so. Let him fight two or three setups. I'll fight the top contenders. I'll keep the game alive because I fight everybody every month, regardless of risk. These champions like Fulman and Frazier, they fight once or twice a year. The game dies. So it's his prerogative not to talk about me. It's his right. Let him go. Uh, one day the public will probably demand it, but uh, he's not ready for me now. George Fulman would not stand the chance. If he dreamed it, he better wake up and apologize. <laughs> Ali, let's look at this because you said over the hill and we're talking about... Are you the color sale? <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Let's look at this fight who's over 30. Uh, is that that time that one has to worry in his particular profession? Well, the average profession? fight over 30 who's 31 like myself, what you're cracking about, the average fella has to worry because, but great fighters like me, great fighters like Sugar Ray Robinson was, great fighters like Jack Johnson, great fighters like Archie Moore, great fighters like Joe Lewis, I'm in that category. I could cruise until I'm 40 with no trouble. I'm so fast I hit you for God get the news. <laughs> Listen, when I slow down, when I slow down, I'll be faster than all these chumps. When I slow down, I'll be three times faster. You know, so I got a long time. Look, I just got to fight another night. I'm pretty as you and you're a TV announcer. <laughs> Reds play tonight. We'll have the score on the Late Show. That's sports for now. Unforgettable. Are you a Nat King Cole fan? Then listen to this great money saving offer. The Longines Symphonette Society has just put together a beautiful seven record treasury with 70 of Nat King Cole's most unforgettable recordings. All of his great hits are here. Tenderly. Caress the trees. Tenderly. Ramblin' Roads. Ramblin' Roads. I remember you. And of course, Sweet Lorraine. Now I've just found joy. Hit after hit by the incomparable I'm Nat King Cole. And here's one I'm sure is a favorite. Roll out the lazy, hazy, crazy. And this great Nat Cole classic. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. You'll also get Stardust. At last and his wonderfully touching Christmas song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Now thousands have already sent for this collection at $14.95. But if you act right now, you'll get all seven records, 70 Nat King Cole hits for just $9.95. Also available on five eight-track tapes for just $16.95. And they're sold on a complete money-back guarantee from the Longine Symphonette Society. Act right now. Call toll-free, 800-431-1778. That's 800-431-1778. Or write to Nat King Cole, WJAR-TV, Providence, Rhode Island. When the postman delivers your records, pay him $9.95 plus COD charges or $16.95 plus COD charges for tapes. That number again is toll-free, 800-431-1778. That's 800-431-1778.
One of the functions of the Consumer Division of the Department of Rhode Island's Attorney General is to enforce the local laws governing advertising. On tonight's Consumer Report, Sandy Alessandro tells of the action being prepared against a firm that has allegedly violated the law. Attorney General Israel has announced that he has filed a petition to a judge in contempt, Angelo Caffone, an individual doing business as Beefland and as Beef Stampede. The firm is located on Pontiac Avenue in Cranston, Rhode Island. Mr. Israel states that on October 30th, 1972, Judge Florence K. Murray ordered that the defendant will submit to the Attorney General's Department for approval all advertisement before submitting it to the media. Attorney General Israel is informed and believes and therefore alleges that Mr. Caffone of Beefland has violated the court order in that he has placed an ad in the Providence Evening Bulletin of February 15, 1973 without obtaining prior approval of the Attorney General's Department. The Attorney General alleges that the defendant's advertisements are misleading and unfair to the public and therefore represent a deceptive trades act. Mr. Israel has asked the court to issue a citation directed to the defendant, ordering him to appear before the Providence County Superior Court to show cause, if he has any, why he should not be punished for violating the law. That's Angelo Caffone doing business as Beef Land and Beef Stampede in the city of Cranston, Rhode Island. For you, the consumer, and for 10 News, I'm Sandy Alessandro. A doctor from Connecticut has agreed to move his practice from Darien to Block Island. Dr. Charles Cornbrooks of Norwalk will be the first resident physician on the island since last November. The 47-year-old doctor says his decision was a quick one, but he says it's the type of place he's had in mind for quite a spell. Dr. Cornbrook says he expects to take up practice on the island about May 1st. And now with the non-happiness street type of business report, the reality of the stock market, here is Michael Morgan. Thank you, Dick. Good evening, everybody. Trading was fairly light on the New York Stock Exchange today because of continued fears of inflation. Also, the shooting down of that Libyan jetliner by Israeli warplanes cast a cloud of doubt in the minds of some investors. The Dow Jones Industrial Average moved up seven points in the first hour of trading, but when the final bell rang, it was down more than nine points. Transportation, utilities, and the stock averages were also down today. Volume on the big board was substantial, though, and over on the American exchange, trading hit three and a half million shares. An average share of common stock and the Amex were both down today. Closing prices on some of today's most active issues included AT&T, 50 and 7 eighths unchanged, Pan American World Airways, 9 and 1 eighth, down one quarter, Fleetwood Enterprises, 15 and 1 quarter, down 2 and 1 eighth, Time Incorporated, 44, down one half, and General Motors, 74 and 7 eighths, down 5 eighths. Locally, it was Amtel, 5 and 1 eighth, unchanged again today, Brown and Sharp, 12 and 1 quarter, up one eighth, Foxborough, 29 and 1 eighth, up one eighth, Industrial National Corporation closed at 38 and 3 quarters, that was unchanged today, the Sona, 15, also unchanged, the Outlet Company, 14 and 1 half, up one eighth, Raytheon, 30, down 1 and 5 eighths, Rhode Island Hospital Trust Corporation closed at 39 to 40 today. Texas Instruments, 180 and 1 eighth, down 2 and 7 eighths. Textron, 26 and 3 quarters, up 1 eighth. And Uniroyal, 13 and 3 quarters, up 1 eighth. Closing prices on those local stocks through the courtesy of Payne, Weber, Jackson, and Curtis. The Justice Department has filed a civil antitrust suit against the National Association of Securities Dealers and 15 other defendants, charging a conspiracy of controlling the mutual funds trade. Also named in that indictment were three mutual funds services, their principal underwriters, and nine of the largest security brokerage firms in the United States. And that's our business report for tonight.
the totally new 1973 edition of Disney on Parade. A sparkling cast of over 100 Disney characters on stage, in person. An extraordinary two and a half hour super stage spectacular. See the all new for 73 Disney on Parade. Disney on Parade at the new Providence Civic Center, February 27th through March 4th. Get your tickets now. This is an apple pie, the real thing. And this is a pie crust table. The first one came from England in the 18th century. This one came from Reutemann's in Providence. It's an authentic reproduction. You'd have a hard time distinguishing it from the originals you see in museums. This one not only swivels, the top also tilts. And this is the traditional bird cage. It supports the top. The tabletop is swirl mahogany, and it's beautiful, like all the furniture you find at Reutemann's in Providence. Extra effort news at 11 tonight. Franz Lobbett reports all that happened today during that late edition. Indications are that our spring-like weather of recent days is going to change back to extremely cold weather with the potential of snow. Right, John? URI plays host to Temple and college basketball tonight. In college hockey, PC and Brown both in action. And in the pro ranks, the Reds are at home to the Amherst. Chris Clark will have full details on his sports wrap-up tonight. A ceasefire in Laos and tragedy in the Middle East. John Chancellor has details next on 10. The news. This is NBC Nightly News, Wednesday, February 21st. Reported by John Chancellor with David Brinkley's Journal.